Ladies and gentlemen, this is RedGamingTed.com video. We're going to be analyzing the PS4's GPU. It's also going to go slightly into the Xbox 720 as well, since we assume uh, from the rumored specifications that they're similar in GPU power, uh, just missing a few GCN cores, so at least we can get a brief um, theory of how the Xbox 720 is going to perform. So, first thing we're going to do is very quickly go over the specifications of the PS4. I'm sure many of you know it already, but we'll go over it anyway. We know, of course, that both the CPU and the GPU are being powered by AMD. The AMD uh, CPU is the Jaguar. Now, the Jaguar is running at 1.6 GHz and has 8 cores. That's two 4-core clusters, if you really want me to be precise. Um, it's got 8 gigabytes of unified DDR5 RAM, which is capable of around 176 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. And more importantly for this video at least, we've also got a GPU which is based upon the Radeon 7970M range. Now there have been some changes for the PS4 and Xbox 720 versions, although we're going to be, as I said, concentrating on the PS4 since we actually know more about that in terms of exact specifications though as i said we will touch slightly upon the xbox 720 so we do know there has been some changes as i've already mentioned um the amount of gcn cores is one of them and the actual clock speed that they run at is another now another thing to note before we really jump in that to the actual ps4's performance is that there also are some differences between the 7970m and the regular 7970 that say you would plug into your pc um the number of differences are basically concerning on the amount of stream processes or if you prefer the gcn cores and the speed that the core actually runs at. Now, this is due to a few reasons. That's pretty much the exact same reason I'm going to give later on for the changes on the PS4's um, own version of the 7970. And that's simple. When you're designing something for the netbook or notebook or whatever environment, there are a couple of challenges you have. First of all is battery life and power draw. Now, battery life isn't really something you have to worry about with a PS4, but in the terms of notebooks it is. Um, obviously, the, the more power draw you have, the less battery life you have as well. Um, also, the more power an object takes, or should I say, a uh, graphics core, what have you. Same as, say, a transformer, if you plug it into, your, say, your mains to charge a phone, you'll notice that it does indeed produce heat. Now, obviously, it's not exactly the same principle, but the idea is the same. In other words, the core itself is going to produce more heat, which is therefore what makes it more difficult to cool. And this brings me to the third issue, size. Now... In terms of a mobile environment, you've obviously got a very limited uh, size to work with. In other words, the limited amount of space in that case to install everything. And none more so than heat problems. Um, basically, as I've said before, everything produces heat and therefore you need something like a heat sink and fan to be able to extract that heat from the device or it would quite simply, well, burn up. It would literally um, either stop working or go on fire or something. I exaggerate somewhat, but it wouldn't work for long. Um, cores can heat up very, very quickly. And for those of you who aren't familiar, um, your PC core, for example, the for example, your uh, AMD or uh, Intel CPU can operate from anything from around 30 degrees all the way up to something like 70, depending how crap the cooling is on your system. The, the cooler it is, generally speaking, the higher you can overclock it, but that's a different topic I'm not going to go too far into on this particular video. But what I'm trying to say is that obviously, and the more heat a device produces, the more interesting shall we say the cooling method has to be now there are a couple of um cooling methods as i've said before heat sink and fan being one of them which is typically how a notebook would deal with something or what notebook i say laptop or whatever other device the other one would be say water cooling and there are more um interesting methods as well involving like liquid nitrogen and stuff like that but that's not really what we're going to be talking about but the problem with water cooling and all the other devices is that it adds a lot of weight and not really portable and of course danger and all of that different various bits and pieces so generally speaking most manufacturers of course would go with the air route therefore straight off the bat 
they have to say, okay, you know what, we have to make some sacrifices to this thing. Now, I'm going to read you guys a few specifications. As I've said before, in all of my videos, feel free to either correct me if I've made a mistake, and sometimes I do because, you know, I'm only human. Um, and also because I think it's good for you guys as an exercise to do this, because I like my stuff being checked up on anyway. And by the way, of course, you're free to ask me any questions. You're probably best to do so via Facebook, as I'm more likely to read the message. I will try on YouTube, but I get so many messages um, from people commenting on videos, which can be everything from a Let's Play video all the way up to these type of videos, so it's very difficult to keep track of. Uh, you can message me, but I'm getting a ridiculous amount of spam from those people who want to sell me 1,000 views or whatever for a certain amount of money, and I'm not interested in those of of course. So, as I said, I will get around to reading the video. Anyway, um, I'm really going off the beaten path here. So, let's talk about the actual system itself. And now, as I've said, we're going to talk about the desktop version versus the mobile version first. This is nothing to do with the PS4 for a second, okay? So, first thing we have to do <clears throat> is realize, as I've said before, that there is a limited amount of space. But, that doesn't mean that we can't do at least a like-for-like -like comparison momentarily. First up, the mobile version is running 850 megahertz. Um, this is down from the desktop variants, which run typically at 925. Now, obviously, either of these two could be overclocked somewhat, but you get the idea. Now, there's also less memory because, obviously, smaller space. The notebook, the notebook version, or laptop version, so I say the mobile version, generally runs at around 2 gigabytes of a GDDR5, which is exactly the same as in the PS4. The desktop version has 1 gigabyte more of this, um, which isn't massively more, but still. And the memory clock is actually slightly higher. Now, this doesn't really concern us too much for one reason in particular, and that is, quite simply put, that... Of course, the PS4 is using its own memory anyway, um, so it's not too much of a big deal. So I'm not really going to go too much into that. Now, what we are going to look at, however, is that our less GCN cores. Now, these are compute cores, or graphics card next cores, if you prefer. And this massively affects the amount of texture units, ROPs, and everything else, really, that um, makes the CPU, or should I say the GPU, tick. The desktop version is using 32 of them. That gives you a grand total of 2,048 stream processors. Now, that's a little bit different from the mobile version. Under the, the mobile version, you're cutting that down quite substantially, actually. You've only got 1,280, I'll say that again, 1,280 stream processors, and that's using 20 compute Stay units. Low. So... Just to be clear, that's 32 versus 20, or 2048 stream processors versus 1280. I know I sometimes like to go overboard with the um, clearness, but sometimes a few people, you know, they, they still ask me questions, so I like to be as clear as possible. Um, you're also, as I've said, losing a few texture units. You've got 128 versus 80 of the mobile variant. Of course, all of them are going to be using the PCI Express, uh, PCIe, should I say, Express 3, although that's not really a problem as we're looking at the APU type of device anyway. Of course, all of them support DX 11.1, uh, Shader Model 5, all the other bits and bobs that you would expect. I'm not going to go into all of it, but suffice to say, it has excellent video decoding and everything else that you would expect. For the most part, there's absolutely no difference whatsoever on this versus the, you know, the smaller devices um, of the laptop. There's just none. You know, it all supports the same uh, video outputs in terms of, you know, video decoding and everything else. So, overall, we don't have to worry too much about that. It's pretty nice. Now, before we move on to the PS4, let's talk about a couple of games on these platforms. Now, I'm going to use Call of Duty Black Ops 2 and a couple of other games. I personally haven't done these benchmarks, but I'm just looking at a couple of what looks like to be pretty darn re uh, reliable sites. Now, before we really get into this, bear in mind there is something you must remember. The performance of this card is a mobile, um, is basically the same as a PC. In other words, it's still not a closed architecture. In other words, they could, you could run this game on this system, and even if you had exactly the same specifications on 
the console. I'm talking exactly right down to the, you know, the, every single detail. You'd still get slightly more performance out of the console in pretty much every circumstance because, simply put, the game was designed around running on those specifications. So everything's going to be as it should. There's not going to be driver issues or whatever else. Secondly, of course, there are driver concerns as well. Each revision on the PC, generally speaking, will slightly alter, not always improve, but generally speaking, will alter how a game's performing. See, for example, Tomb Raider on the PC. It has some certain issues, especially with the hair, um, Tresex, I think it's called, um, running. And I believe there's been some fixes for that. There's also a couple of graphical glitches as well on Tomb Raider, and they're not that awful. Now, there are a couple of them that are versus the GeForce 6 GTX 680M, which of course is from NVIDIA. And I can give you, just for point of comparison, how that's doing as well. The GeForce 680M, of course, is the NVIDIA variant. Now, remember, these trade blows. So, in other words, something that's better on, say, AMD hardware could be substantially worse on uh, GeForce hardware, and then the same is also true, so GeForce could be AMD. An example of that would be, and these are all 1080p unless I denote otherwise, we're looking at Max Payne, um, everything at very high, and with anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering, everything else, and you're looking at 55.8 frames a second on the Radeon hardware, and it dips down uh, by... 42.2 frames per second, so that's a 24% drop off to you and I um, if you're running on the GeForce. And uh, we're going to look at another one. This would be uh, the Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim 1080p. Uh, we're looking at basically 60 frames per second, which is actually slightly higher, uh, a couple of frames per second higher than the GeForce GTX um, can muster, which is quite nice. And good for the AMD owners. What about Far Cry? Far Cry 3, you're looking at everything absolutely maxed out, enha enhanced alpha to coverage, AA times 4 um, MS and everything else, HDAO enabled. Uh, once again, 1080p, uh, DX11 of course, 7970M is putting out around 27, the GeForce GTX is putting out around 23, Assassin's Creed 3, once again 1080p, very high. The mobile variant of the GTX on, is winning uh, 34 versus 24. So you guys get the idea. In other words, it can play all modern games at 1080p and max graphics. So basically, this is how a modern gaming PC should be able to play a game. For example, Dishonored, uh, 1080p, maximum FOV, AA, um, everything else, higher settings, the GeForce GTX, sorry, the um, yeah, the, G the GTX is putting out 116 FPS and the, the 7970 is putting out around 98. Um, uh, well, what else could we use as an example? Just because, really. Uh, actually, I think that'll probably do it. I'll be here for a while and it's not really worth me calling out every single one of these uh, performances. The point being, this is how a game now runs. Now, I know what you're going to say. But that's not that impressive. I mean, these are modern day games and the system's only putting this out. Well, what you've got to bear in mind is PC games look better right now. If you don't believe me, go ahead and check out my Far Cry 3 or various other graphics comparisons. I was going to do Tomb Raider, but I just didn't have time and I figure it's kind of a bit too late. I might do it this weekend if I have a, fair, a spare few minutes, but I've got a very busy weekend, to be honest, uh, putting videos out for you guys. But regardless... Um, what I'm going to say is simple. The difference between PC gaming and console gaming is, quite simply put, the consoles have a lot less detail in them. They're internally rendering at far lower resolutions. As I've said before in another video, generally speaking, you're looking at 600p, a lot of games now. Um, some titles, for example, Crisis 3 on the PS3 is running at 1020 24 by, uh, I believe it's 720, and that's not even a uh, widescreen resolution, that's anamorphic widescreen. If you want to know more about that, I suggest you do Googling. I do have an article on this, by the way, on uh, Red Gaming Tech, which does go into some detail, um, if you guys are curious. So, I think you get a fair idea now of what I'm coming from. Now, bear in mind, the performance is going to be even more profound on a closed architecture system, because you don't, 
the manufacturers don't have to worry about hey you know what Jimmy's got an AMD graphics card and you know Tommy's got a NVIDIA graphics card and he's got an Intel CPU and he's got a you know an AMD CPU and this cores you know he's got a tri-core CPU he's got a four core CPU that was running at 3.2 that's running at 3 it, it doesn't have to worry about that you know it's every PS4 every Xbox 720 is going to be the same specifications with that said there are some discernible cuts for the 7970M on the PS4. Now they're not drastic. It's not like they've halved the clock speed or reduced or cut, you know, all of the GCN cores out bar two or something. But there are some differences which are somewhat notable. So let's go into those right now. The most obvious one that we're going to talk about is the clock speed cut. Now it's not massive. As I've said previously, looking at 850 megahertz for the um, variant that you can find on laptops, and you're looking at 800 for this. So it's 50 megahertz cut, which isn't massive. You're also looking at yet more cuts to the compute units. The GCN cores have been cut from 20 to 18. Now, the mobile variant has 2.176, so that's 2.176 of the gigaflops of single precision compute power they always measure it in single precision the desktop version in other words the version you can get on your pc has 3.79 teraflops of computing power which is absolutely ridiculous by the way uh, on the other hand the ps4 has around 1.84 teraflops um to process graphics which isn't too bad at all once again this does mean the gcn cores can be used for other things such as physics and other bits and bobs Fortunately, there are no changes to various uh, parts of the core, which include, uh, for example, the amount of ROPs on it, which is very important. As I've mentioned previously as well, it seems that they have kept all the DX11 stuff in, which of course is going to be very handy for Microsoft, although I don't think the PS4 is going to be using that. Um, of course, the Xbox 720 does have it connected to that small frame buffer. The amount exactly eludes me, to be honest, right now. My brain's pretty tired. Um, right in the morning, I'm supposed to be getting ready for work in a few minutes, but regardless. Um, the amount eludes me, but it's not much. I think 32 megabytes or something like that. But, uh, of course, Xbox 720, for what we know, is using DDR3 RAM. Whereas the PS4 is going to be using a GDDR5. There is a lot of memory bandwidth, however, for this. Um, in case you're wondering, it's 153 gigabytes of memory bandwidth for the mobile series of the cards, which is quite impressive, although the PS4 um, actually has more memory bandwidth. It's looking at 176 Remember, however, that that does have to do other things, including feed the CPU. It's not like it's just doing one thing. However, with a slightly inferior um, 7970M in it, it's not really the 7970M. It's its, its own core by rights now. Uh, as I've said, 18 compute cores, which is down from 20, and 800 megahertz, which is down from the 850. Although the ROPs are all the same, which is nice. There's absolutely ridiculous amount of ROPs in the system, uh, which is very important for processing certain high-resolution images and so forth. In theory, I have heard that the system could actually support 4K displays. In practice, Sony have said, actually, that's not really what we're going for, guys. Um, so we'll have to see how that plays out, uh, to be honest with you. I've not really seen that much about other stuff, such as text units. Um, I, I'm assuming that they'll have been cut down a little bit further. As I've said, there's 80 on the uh, 7970M, so it's probably around that number, maybe a couple less. I don't think it's going to have halved or anything like that. It's also worth noting that there is a level 2 cache on the platform as well. Um, from what I can see, that seems to have been removed. From what I can see from the official AMD specifications I am looking at, it, which is of course available at amd.com, I don't see the 512 megabyte cache, which is uh, on the actual uh, mobile variant. It seems to be exclusive to the desktop. Uh, that's level 2 read-write cache, by the way. And of course, that's very good for... Uh, the cache is very useful for instructions that are very constant 
on the application. So in other words, if the application is constantly telling the CPU to do one thing, the cache is basically used just to grab that little bit of data. Um, obviously 512 what it isn't much, but most caches are very small, even on uh, say your CPU, it's a couple of megabytes per core at most. A uh, couple, you know, the really high-end processors could be a bit more, but you get the idea. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm completely off topic. If you are looking for a new graphics card right now, it's worth noting that the AMD range, not that I'm, you know, pro any graphics card, as you guys know, I even own a GeForce one, but it is worth noting that the GeForce, uh, sorry, the AMD range do come with a couple of nice games um, bundled, including Far Cry 3 or Tomb Raider or... Um, even sleeping dogs and other bits and bobs as well if you do some shopping around so if you are curious and you've missed out on a couple of the latest games it's worth remembering that so yeah i mean obviously we'll know a lot more about how the ps4 is affected by this stuff when it's released later on uh in terms of overall power it of course does give the edge to the mobile variant over the ps4 and the desktop version over the mobile variant but that's not a surprise we do know of course that the the ps4 version has been cut down mostly because of heat concerns and if i had to guess another reason would have been because of manufacturing concerns in other words the more cores and the higher that that has to be you know clocked at the better the chance of a defect. I'll give you guys a really quick example before I go. Um, when you buy a CPU, there's a chance, of course, that you'll be able to heavily overclock it. And there's also a chance that you won't really be able to heavily overclock it. And that's because those items have been... I'm just going to really easily round it up and say speed bend. In other words, when they're being produced, they say, hey, can especially this is especially the case back when... Uh, there wasn't multi-cores, it's not so much of an issue now, but multi-cores, it makes it even more complicated. But what they basically do is they say, hey, can this run at this speed? No. Okay, well, it can go into the lower grade, can't it? And indeed, in some cases, AMD have been known to disable cores um, on faulty devices. So, for example, they'll remove them in groups of four, I believe it was, with the Radeon X800s. And you can actually re-enable some of them, is basically what happened, but they wouldn't run at the same speed. So, for example, let's say you bought one, um, just use this as a pure example. Let's say you bought a, a card that had, say, 12, uh, 12 processors. I'm just really rounding this up, but let's say you, you, you did. And let's say that yours runs at, let's say, 100 megahertz. I'll just use a very arbitrary figure. Now, let's say the full version has 16, but runs at 150. Well... You might be able to buy yours, enable the extra four, but you won't be able to run it at the, you know, the extra uh, 50 megahertz. And otherwise, it won't physically run at it. It just, it, it physically can't do it. Maybe because a couple of those uh, cores are broken or what have you. So it really depends. What I'm basically saying is that it's far easier to manufacture products that have less complicated uh, instructions. By the way, in case anyone's curious, yes, all of these cards do heavily support anti-aliasing and multi-sampling and so forth. Uh, for example, uh, looking at 7970M uh, desktop, you're looking at 24 uh, multi-sample and super sample anti-aliasing modes, which means you're going to get ridiculously smooth images. Uh, no jag is basically is what i'm trying to tell you guys and yes that does actually translate to the m versions as well just in case you're wondering although obviously with the less gpu power you will be looking at some small sacrifices to the actual you know frame rates as it would stand out so yeah i think that just about covers everything i need to on this particular video i am running a little bit late and being naughty i need to start getting ready for what is known as work what i'd recommend however you guys will of course subscribe to the channel if you want to continue to be berated with information uh, per perhaps berated is the wrong word but regardless um I will, of course, be heavily covering the Xbox 720 when it's formally announced. Um, obviously, right now, we're dealing with specifications that aren't heavily known. We do know that the rumored specifications of the Xbox 720 are inferior, and especially with the graphics core. 
um, in terms of the amount of GCN cores on it, which isn't good, obviously. I'm hoping Microsoft pull their finger out, but bear in mind that those specifications are from 2011, which is somewhat old. Also, it's worth noting that we do not know of any custom chips or custom um, changes to the chips. For example, we don't know if their uh, Jaguar core has been significantly changed, maybe has a built-in or improved handling of uh, compute functions. We don't know, for example, um, if the actual graphics core itself has, say, SLI modules, or shall I say Crossfire modules. We just don't know right now because they're effectively two-year-old link that's just kind of surfaced, so we're kind of surmising from that. So, yeah. Basically, very old specifications, and hopefully um, we'll see more superior uh, specs now. Regardless, remember, the, the PS4, for example, is also a couple of... Sorry, guys, you might hear, hear a little bit of noise outside. I keep saying that it's construction outside my house. I can't do much about it. Um... I've mentioned before the PS4 did manage to slightly improve its specifications to say the least by adding another 4 gigs of RAM on there, which no one knew about. Uh, well, of course there were some rumours, but no one actually thought that they'd managed to actually pull the damn thing off. Anyway, um, this video has turned out far, far, far longer than I initially thought it was going to do. So hopefully you found it somewhat informative, and I will see you around soon. Take care of yourselves, and bye for now.